Hi everyone, and welcome to Sunflower Yoga Works. Today's slow flow class will focus on hips and hamstrings. We will begin our practice in a seated position on the mat, so go ahead and begin to make your way there. And as you do so, I encourage you to deepen your breath starting to take some longer inhales and longer exhales. Slowing the pace of your breath a bit. the end of your next breath, if you have the eyes closed, start to slowly reopen them. Shifting the legs now out in front of the body, bend the knees and plant the feet so we're in a modified boat pose position. We'll take a few seated cat cows here. So drawing the hands to the fronts of the knees, on the inhale, draw the chest forward, take the gaze up. And on the exhale, rock back on the tailbone, bring the chin to the chest, round the spine. We'll take a few more just like that. Inhale to open through the front of the body. And exhale, open through the back of the body. I'll go ahead and shift on my mat here so you can see a side view as well. Really working to bring some mobility into the spine here, coordinate the movement with the breath. Make sure you're using the head here as well. So taking the gaze up on the inhale and down on the exhale. And at the end of your next breath cycle, come back to a neutral spine, that kind of halfway point between your cat and cow. And then bring your hands down on either side of the hips, fingertips facing your body. Start to lean back with a long spine and hover your feet, flexing at the ankles. Draw your legs together in the center, engage the inner thigh, find modified boat pose. And if you're ready to kick it up a notch with the abdominals, you can get rid of your hands for full boat pose. We'll take just two more breaths here, engaging the belly, start to build some heat in the core. Good. Take one more inhale. On the exhale, keep the right knee bent, lengthen the left leg. Take the left leg all the way down and then cross your right leg over the lengthened leg. Finding a seated twist, sit nice and tall. On the inhale, take your right arm behind you and your left arm toward the sky. Exhale, twist to your right side as you hug the right knee in toward your chest with that left arm. You can take the gaze out over your right shoulder, using the right arm against the mat here as sort of a kickstand to help you keep the spine nice and long. At the end of the next breath, gently unwind the shoulders back to center. We'll take a counter stretch as you bring the shoulders the opposite way, bowing toward the left side just slightly. And then gently return back to center. You can uncross the legs, maybe give them a little shake. Pull the knees in toward the body, planting the feet for this modified boat position. Again, hands on top of the knees. Take a few seated cat cows to reset the spine. end of the next breath, find your neutral spine, sitting nice and tall. We'll move back into our modified boat pose. You can take the hands down behind you as you lift the feet or get rid of the hands right away this time if you're looking for that extra core challenge. Pulling the inner thighs toward one another in the center, keep the chest broad and open, engage the belly. One more full breath here. Take an inhale where you are. On the exhale, extend the right leg. 
slowly release it down and then cross the left leg over, taking that seated twist prep on the other side. We'll take the left hand down behind us now as we inhale the right arm up high. Exhale, twist to your left side, hugging that left knee in toward the chest with the right arm. You can use the left hand down behind you as a little kickstand here to keep the spine nice and long. Gaze is down and over the left shoulder. to draw the shoulders back through the center. We'll take a counter twist as we draw the body over to the right, bowing slightly. And then take the upper body back through the center. Go ahead and unwind your legs. And however is easiest for you to get there, we'll transition to a table pose, moving to all fours. Once you're in all fours, we are just here for a moment. Slide your hands slightly forward, tuck your toes and lift your hips. We'll find our first downward facing dog. Being gentle with the body here at the start of our practice. Feel free to pedal the feet, shake the head, yes and no, shift the hips forward and back. Whatever feels good as we start to warm into this triangle shape in the body, this foundational pose of our practice today downward facing dog. Finding some stillness now in your down dog, lifting the hips toward the sky as you draw the heels toward the mat. Press through all 10 fingers to support the wrists, let the head fall between the shoulders. On the next inhale, draw the gaze between the hands, and at the end of your exhale, start to travel toward the top of your mat, finding a forward fold nice and gentle here. So you can keep as much of a bend in the knees as you need to. Let the weight of the upper body hang all the way down, maybe grabbing for opposite elbows in a ragdoll pose if that feels good. You can take a sway from side to side, bend one knee and then the other. Starting to send your breath to the hamstrings, the backs of the legs, as well as into the lower back. Gently release the grip of the hands if you have it, bend deeply into the knees and we'll roll one vertebra at a time all the way up to stand. Keep the arms down by your sides at the top and make sure the head comes up last, nice and slow. As you come all the way up, reset your feet on the mat if you need to to find Tadasana, mountain pose, bringing the feet hips distance apart and parallel to one another, taking a moment to stand tall, focusing here on your posture. Draw the palms to face forward with some energy in the fingertips. Try to relax the shoulder blades down away from your ears. Keep a slight tuck through the tailbone and a baby bend in the knees, creating some buoyancy here in the pose. Abdominals are slightly engaged as the low belly hugs up and in. On your next inhale, reach both arms up high toward the sky. And as you exhale, hinge at the hips, release to your forward fold position. On the inhale, we'll lift the spine halfway, lengthening from tailbone through top of head. And exhale, release to your forward fold. Inhale, root to rise, come all the way to stand with the arms overhead at the top. And exhale, draw the hands through heart center. Inhale to reach high overhead. And exhale, fold forwards. Inhale to lift and lengthen halfway. And exhale, release to fold. This time, bend the knees and plant the hands, stepping back to your plank pose of choice, either with the knees down or lifted, you choose. 
keep the spine nice and long, plug the shoulder blades onto the back. And on your next inhale, shift slightly forward, and then exhale, hug the elbows in by the ribs as we slowly lower all the way down to the belly, chaturanga. Uncurl the toes at the bottom, and then on your inhale, squeeze the shoulder blades behind your back, open through the front side of the body for cobra pose. Exhale, release from your baby back bend. Start to shift the hips all the way back to downward facing dog. Remembering that you can always take a child's pose as a substitute for down dog anytime that you need a moment to collect your thoughts or your breath. From wherever you ended up on the next inhale, we'll take the gaze between the hands and exhale, travel to the top of the mat for a forward fold. On the inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. And exhale, release to your fold. Inhale, root to rise all the way to stand. Take the arms overhead at the top. And exhale, pull the hands through the heart. One more full round here. Inhale to reach high overhead. And exhale to fold forwards. Inhale to lift and lengthen halfway. And exhale, release to your fold. Travel back to plank pose. Take the knees down if you need. And we inhale at the top of the plank, shift forward. Exhale, travel through your chaturanga. This time on the inhale, option to take upward facing dog, lifting the hips. And exhale back to downward facing dog when you're ready. Nice work. Let's take a cleansing breath here in through the nose and out through the mouth. Really sigh it out, let it go. And then drawing the feet closer together behind you so that the big toes almost touch. On the inhale, we'll lift the left leg for one-legged dog, keeping the hips square at first. Really stretch through your left heel and keep your right heel pressing down toward the ground. Support the weight of the upper body with all 10 fingertips. Take one more inhale here. On the exhale, bend, stack, and open with your left hip, letting the hips open to the left side of your space, working to keep the shoulders square so you have a gentle twist through the torso here. On your next inhale, re-square the hips, lengthen the left leg. Exhale, pull the left knee through the center. Plant the left foot in between the hands, finding your runner's lunge position. From here, we'll take a variation of bird dog pose. So keep your right hand planted and then sweep your left arm straight out in front of you here. Take an inhale to hold this position and on the exhale, can you roll to the outer edges of both of your feet Sending your left arm up and back, follow with the gaze. Say hello to this left outer thigh. Inhale, come back to your bird dog pose, hips face forward, left hand reaches forward as well. And then exhale, open to the side of your space, follow that left hand with the gaze. We'll do that one more time. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, twist back. On the inhale, we come forward once again. On the exhale, both hands come down, the back heel comes down as well. Untuck the toes. We'll sweep the arms up overhead for our low crescent lunge. Taking a moment here to come out of the posture a bit, tuck your tailbone under, and you can even use your hands here on the low back to help you make sure that you have a slight tuck in the tailbone, that low belly is engaged, so you're not overarching through the spine. And then can you maintain that pelvis alignment as you send the hips forward once again? Should give you a nice big opening through the front of that right hip. Once you have the hips set, you can take the arms back up overhead. Remember to keep that low belly engaged and we're gonna flow a bit here. So on your inhale, lengthen the fingertips toward the sky. And on the exhale, cactus the arms. Take the elbows to 90 degrees and open through the chest. Inhale, lengthen from crown to tailbone. 
and exhale, open through the chest, little back bend. One more time, inhale, lengthen fingertips toward the sky. Exhale, open into that cactus position. Inhale, we come back through the center last time here. And then exhale, take both hands down to the mat to square your front foot. From here, we'll move to a hamstring stretch. So starting to send your hips in the opposite direction now, lengthening through your left leg and walking the hands back so they can remain underneath your shoulders to support you here. Flex your left toes and try to keep a long spine. So you can even start from the top down here if you wanna catch your balance, find a nice long spine, and then slowly start to hinge. Keeping that long spine, try not to round through the shoulders as you start to reach the upper body over that extended leg. Breathe into the left hamstring, we'll stay for three more breaths. On your next exhale, send the weight of the body forward. Find your runner's lunge as you tuck the back toes, get rid of the back knee. Then planting the hands down to the mat, step the left foot all the way back to meet the right in a plank. You can move through a vinyasa here or shift right back to downward facing dog if you wanna ditch a chaturanga, no worries. From downward facing dog, we'll move right onto the other side. So drawing the feet together behind you so the big toes are almost touching. On your next inhale, lift the right leg toward the sky for one-legged dog, keeping the hips square here at first. Toes are flexed and pointing down. Keep that left heel pressing down toward the mat as you lengthen the right heel behind you. Take one more inhale where you are. On the exhale, we allow the hips to open as we bend, stack, and open with the right leg, bringing the right heel back toward your glutes, trying to keep the shoulders square here, so a little twist through the torso. On the inhale, reach where the hips lengthen the right leg. And then exhale, pull the right knee through the center. Plant the foot in between the hands, finding your runner's lunge. And we'll take this little bird dog variation as we keep the left palm planted. Lengthen the right arm straight out in front of you here. Take an inhale in this lengthened position. And on the exhale, we roll to the outer edges of both feet. Send the right leg back and down. Right arm back and down, good. Inhale, reach forward, re-square the hips. And exhale, twist open, follow the right hand with the gaze. Inhale to re-square. And exhale, twist and open. Inhale, last time, back to that bird dog variation. On the exhale, both hands are down, the back, the back knee comes down as well. You can untuck the toes and then lift through the upper body for our low crescent lunge. Option to draw the hands to your low back if that was helpful on the first side. Come out of the posture a bit to check in on the pelvic alignment. Try to tuck the tailbone under slightly so that you feel the opening through that left hip. Low belly is engaged, shoulders stacked over the hips. When you're ready, keep that alignment as you shift the hips forward a little bit deepening the bend in your right knee. And when you're ready, you can take the arms back up overhead. Good, maintaining that core engagement, we'll take an inhale to lengthen the fingertips high. On the exhale, bend at the elbows 90 degrees, cactus the arms open the chest. Inhale to lift and lengthen. And exhale to open. One more time, inhale, lift. Exhale, open. We inhale back through the center with the upper body and exhale both hands down to the mat, squaring the front foot. When you're ready, start to take your hips in the opposite direction here for a half split, walking your hands back so they remain underneath the shoulders, 
lengthen through your right leg and flex your right toes. You can come out of the posture a bit, lifting the upper body if you need to, to help find that nice long spine. We want to resist the urge to round through the shoulders here. We all get enough of that in our day today, so keep the chest broad and open. Three more breaths. Say hello to the right hamstring. On your next exhale, send the weight forward, returning to a lunge as you tuck the toes, get rid of the back knee. Plant the hands firmly to the mat and step your right foot all the way back to plank, taking a vinyasa here or moving right back into downward facing dog if you prefer. From down dog, we will inhale the gaze between the hands. Exhale, travel to the top of the mat for a forward fold. Inhale to lift and lengthen halfway. And exhale, release to your fold. Inhale, root to rise all the way to stand. Take the arms overhead at the top. And exhale, pull the hands through. On the next inhale, reach both arms high overhead. And exhale, swan dive to forward fold. Inhale to lift and lengthen halfway. And exhale, release to fold. Travel through your vinyasa here. As always, option to leave out the chaturangas will meet in downward facing dog. From down dog, draw the feet closer together behind you and on the inhale, lift the left leg. For one legged dog, keep the hips square. Stretch through the heels, one more inhale here and then exhale, open the hips, bend the left knee, take that left heel toward your glutes. On the inhale, re-square the hips, lengthen the left leg, and exhale, pull the left knee through the center, plant the foot in between the hands. Take the right hand firmly to the mat, lengthen the left arm straight out in front of you, big inhale, and exhale, roll to the outer edges of the feet, follow the left hand back with your gaze. Inhale, reach forward, unwind, and exhale to open. One more time, inhale, reach forward, and exhale, open. We inhale back to the front of the mat, and exhale, release the hand down, take the back knee down as well. Find your low crescent lunge, finding that pelvic alignment right away. See if you can find that slight tuck without having to draw your hands to the hips. Keep the fingertips reaching toward the sky. Take one more inhale where you are, and on the exhale, open the chest, cactus the arms. Inhale to lengthen, and exhale, open. One more time, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, cactus the arms. Inhale back to the center, and exhale, take the hands down to square the front foot. Send your hips back to your half split, and you can either stay here, or if you have a full split in your practice, or you'd like to work toward one, this is a great place to use a block or a blanket if you happen to have one nearby. You can start to slide your front heel forward, and then use your back toes to slide your back knee back. You don't have to go all the way down, but just find something that you can hold. Working to pull your left hip back and your right hip forward to keep the hip bone square. Flex your left toes, try to stay tall through the spine. Three more breaths.
gently start to make your way back to a lunge position. Easier said than done if you took full splits, so drawing the heels back, back closer to one another. And then when you're ready, tucking the back toes, planting your hands toward the front foot, we'll add on from here as we turn toward the right edge of our mat, shifting both hands to the inside of the left knee and opening the hips toward that right side for a half squat position. So you wanna check and make sure your left toes should be angled toward the top right corner of your mat and your knee is tracking out over the toes. If it's uncomfortable to be this low in the knee, you can lift and take a modified version with your elbow on top of the leg here. So choose what works for you. If you are down comfortably with the hips low and the chest high, maybe test yourself to get rid of your hands, drawing the palms to heart center. Breathing into the left inner thigh and hip flexor. Take two more full breaths. Start to draw the hands down from wherever you are. We'll lengthen through the left leg, sending the hips high and finding wide angle pose, adjusting the feet so that all 10 toes are now facing the long edge of your space. Take an inhale with the spine long, and then exhale, roll the spine forward. Let the weight of the head come down. We'll take five full breaths in our wide angle pose. Take any variation with the arms that feels good here. Starting to draw the weight back into the hands, lifting the spine halfway on the inhale. As you exhale, turn everything toward the top edge of your space, finding a lunge position with that left leg in front. Plant the hands on either side of the left foot and step it back to meet the right in a plank, moving through a vinyasa or taking downward facing dog. From down dog, we take our flow on the second and final side. So drawing the feet together behind you. On the inhale, lift the right leg high for one legged dog. Keep the hips square, flex through the heels. Take one more inhale where you are and on the exhale, bend, stack and open with the right leg, taking the right heel toward the glutes. Try to keep the shoulder square. On the inhale, re-square the hips, lengthen the right leg. Exhale, pull the right knee through the center. Plant the foot in between the hands. And then keeping the left hand connected to the mat, lengthen your right arm straight out in front of the body. Take an inhale to prepare. Exhale, roll to the outer edges of the foot. Send the right arm back behind you. Inhale, lengthen forward. And exhale, bend. One more time, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, open. Inhale, come back to the center. Exhale, take the right hand down and the back knee down as well. Finding your low crescent lunge right away. So you find that low belly engagement, slight tuck with the tailbone, shift the hips forward and down, fingertips lengthen toward the sky. Take one more inhale where you are. On the exhale, cactus the arms open the chest. We'll take that two more times here. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, open. One more time. This time as you inhale through the center. On the exhale, we release both hands down to the mat. Start to shift your hips toward the back edge of your space and lengthen through your right leg, finding your half split position. 
If you'd like to try your full split this time through, we start by lengthening or shifting your right heel further forward, and then you can tuck your back toes to wiggle your back knee further back behind you. And it doesn't have to go all the way back down. Just find something that you can breathe into the sensation, particularly in that right hamstring. Try to keep a long spine, flex through the right toes, settle in. We'll take three more full breaths. Slowly start to make your way back to a lunge position, bending into the right knee. And then from here, we'll take our half squat as we walk both hands to the inside of the right leg, turn everything toward the left edge of your space, keeping a bend in the right knee as you lengthen through the left, send the left toes toward the sky. You can always lift the hips and use the elbow above the knee for support here if you need. The lower you take the hips down toward the ground, the harder it will be. We're breathing into the inner thigh and hip flexor on the right leg. Keep the spine long. Option to bring the hands to heart center if that feels good. And we'll take two more breaths right here. reaching the hands to the mat in front of you, start to lengthen through the right leg, finding wide angle pose as you send the hips into the center. Bring all 10 toes to face the long edge of your space and inhale with the nice long spine. Exhale, roll the spine down, lengthen through the back of the legs, let the weight of the head release. You can take whichever arm variation feels good here. This is also a great space to practice an arm balance or an inversion if that is in your practice. So use this time as you wish. We're here for another few breaths. Start to draw some weight back into the palms. And then this time from our wide angle, we'll start to toe heel the feet closer together in the center until they're just a bit wider than the hips with the heels pointing in and the toes pointing out. Bending into the knees, send the tailbone down, lift the chest. You can find a modified yogi squat with your elbows up above your knees. If it's comfortable, make your way all the way down into full yogi squat here, sending the tailbone down toward the mat, lifting the top of the head toward the sky. If you're in this full variation, use the elbows on the insides of your knees to press the inner thighs a little bit more open here. Try to send your tailbone down as if you had a weight attached to your sacrum that was pulling your sacrum down toward the floor. Now from our yogi squat, we'll transition to our boat pose, which we worked on earlier in today's practice. Challenge to see if you can lower to boat without your hands, good luck. Taking the tailbone down, lifting the legs out in front of you, and we find our boat. Nice work, very graceful, good. <laughs> from here, keep the chest nice and open, relax the shoulders away from the ears, say hello to the abdominals. We'll take one more inhale. On the exhale, lengthen the left leg forward. Slowly release it to the ground, cross the right leg over. We find our same spinal twist from before. So taking your right hand down behind you, a little kickstand. On the inhale, lengthen that left arm toward the sky. Exhale, wrap the left arm around your right knee, finding a spinal twist. 
Now that we're a little bit warmer, we have the option to add on. So if you are feeling good in your twists, you want to play with the shoulder bind a bit, maybe you're going to take your left hand and see if you can thread it through this sort of triangle shape that we've created with our legs. And I'll angle so that you can see this way too. I'm going to take my left hand, see if I can thread it through this little hole I've made with my legs. And then I'm gonna take my right hand, reach it all the way behind my back and see if I can find my left fingertips. Wherever you are, continue to sit nice and tall, relax the shoulders away from the ears, flex your left toes so the left leg stays engaged. Take two more breaths. Gently release any bind that you have. Take the shoulders back to the center. And then from here, draw your right leg in sort of a figure four position with your right ankle up above your left knee. And then start to slide your right heel up toward your left hip crease. And it could be a little bit, could be a lot. Maybe even point your right toes so you're coming into this half lotus position. Now, if this is really uncomfortable, you can always release the right sole of the foot to the left inner thigh instead for a half butterfly position. Totally fine modification. Either way, we're going to sit nice and tall. Draw the arms down on either side of your hips. Take a big inhale and on the exhale, start to walk the hands forward. Let the weight of the upper body come down. When we're breathing into the left hamstring here, if you do have that half lotus position, you'll feel that the weight of your right foot is really pressing the left leg down into the ground, allowing for some serious length through that left side. So breathe into your left leg. Three more breaths here. Slowly start to draw back up to a tall seat. We will lengthen both of the legs now out in front of the body, give them a little shake. And let's take that same thing on the other side, starting with our boat pose. So bending the knees, drawing the legs in. You can take the hands behind you for support if needed or come right into that full boat pose. Keep the chest broad and open, hug the belly in toward the spine lengthen from tailbone through the top of the head. Good. Take one more inhale where you are and on the exhale we start to lengthen the right leg. Slowly release that right leg down and cross the left leg over, planting the foot to the outside of your right thigh. Taking our spinal twist, draw your left hand down behind you, a little kickstand. On the inhale, we reach the right arm straight up toward the sky. And exhale, hug the left knee in toward the body as we twist. Now you are welcome to stay in this variation the whole time. If you'd like to try our fun little shoulder bind here, we start by taking the right hand seeing if we can thread it through the hole that we've created with our legs. And then, sitting tall, take your left hand, see if you can wrap it all the way behind your back and find your right hand for a bind. If it works, awesome. If it doesn't, take the first variation, totally fine. Either way, sit tall, lengthen through the right leg as you flex the right toes back toward your ankle. Gaze is over the left shoulder. Gently release any binds that you have, returning the shoulders to the center. We'll move now into our sort of half lotus pose here, um, drawing the left foot 
closer to your right hip crease. You can point through the toes. If it feels comfortable to keep stacked, go ahead and do so. Otherwise, take this half butterfly with the left sole of the foot on the right inner thigh is a good modification. Wherever you end up, we sit tall, drawing the hands down on either side of the hips. Take a big inhale. On the exhale, start to walk the upper body down, releasing into a hamstring stretch, breathing into that right leg, feeling the space between the back of the right knee and the mat start to disappear as you really find length through that right side. the end of the next breath, slowly start to draw back up to a seated position. Uncross the left leg, lengthen both legs in front of the body, give them a little shake. And we'll transition now onto our backs, however is easiest for you to get there. Once you make your way all the way down, you can gently hug your knees into your chest. Maybe take a little rock from side to side as you massage the low back into the ground beneath you. And at the end of your next breath, Keep your left knee in toward the chest. Release your right foot to plant down onto the mat with the knee bent. We'll take our left leg, cross it over the right leg in a figure four position, and you can either keep that right foot down for a little more gentle stretch, or you can hug both knees into the chest, taking the gaze behind the right knee, or taking the bind behind the right knee, I should say for a little deeper stretch in the outer thigh and glutes on the left leg. Slowly start to release the right foot back down onto the mat if you did have it pulled in, but keep the left leg crossed over. We're going to lengthen the arms out on either side of the body, finding a T with the arms if your space allows. And then from here, we'll make our way into a spinal twist, starting by pressing into your right foot and just shift your hips a little bit over to the right edge of your mat. From there, let the weight of the leg start to drop toward the left, keeping your left ankle crossed over your right knee. And you can roll to the inside of that right foot so that you really start to get that spinal twist position. Now, if it's uncomfortable to keep the left ankle on the outside of the right knee, you're of course welcome to release and just take a traditional spinal twist with the knees stacked. So choose what's gonna work for you here. Once you decide where the legs are going to be, take your gaze out over your right shoulder so the head is in the opposite direction of the knees. And we'll take a few more breaths right here. Using the abdominals to control the transition, start to pull the legs back in toward the center. 
draw your hips back into the center of the mat as well and uncross the legs. You can give the knees a squeeze into the chest to help reset the spine here. And then we'll move on to the other side, keeping the right knee in toward the chest. Drop your left foot to the mat with the knee pointing toward the sky. Cross your right leg over the left leg, finding your figure four position here. You can either keep that left foot planted or hug both knees into the chest, taking the hands behind your left knee. Breathe into the outer thigh and glutes on the right side, keeping the right toes flexed and tailbone grounded. If you lifted the left foot from the mat, slowly release it back down, keeping the right leg crossed over the left. Lengthen the arms out to a T as much as your space allows. And then press into the left foot to help you shift the hips over to the left edge of your space just a little bit. Allow the weight of the legs to drop all the way down to the right, sliding to the inner edge of your left Foot and keeping that right heel connected to the outside edge of the left knee if that's comfortable. As I said on the first side, you can of course uncross the legs and just take that traditional spinal twist if that feels better for you today. And from wherever you decide to be, take your gaze out over the left shoulder so the head is in the opposite direction of the knees. Abdominals to slowly draw the legs back into the center, realigning the hips on the mat and uncrossing the legs. Hug the knees into the chest for a gentle squeeze. Maybe take a little rocking motion. Any free movement that feels good getting out any final wiggles in the body before we make our way into Shavasana, our final resting pose. And then when you're ready, you can go ahead and lengthen the legs down onto the mat, letting the feet fall out to the sides. Arms come down on either side of the hips with the palms facing toward the ceiling. Gently close the eyes and tuck your chin just slightly so that the back of the neck lengthens. Take the next few breaths in stillness to reflect on your practice. Feeling the benefits of your focus travel through the body.
You are welcome to stay here for as long as you wish. Thank you for joining Sunflower Yoga Works, and I look forward to practicing with you again soon. Namaste.